Welcome back to So Bad It's Good, presented by Betches Media. Today, this is a dream interview, you guys. This is this is what we put all the hard work in for. If you guys have been listening to the show, you know how much I have fallen in love with a reality show called The Valley that has aired directly after Vanderpump Rules this whole season. Well, last night, you saw the season finale of the first season of The Valley, and we have two uh, amazing, I, I guess, characters, even though they're real people and this is their real life. Uh, you know them from their hit podcast, balancing act also one of these people is a reality show legend already we will see how she feels making her entrance into another show and and for the other guy we have it's his first reality show so we will see what his experience is with this uh from the podcast balancing acts we have luke broderick and Kristen doty welcome to the show thanks ryan uh, i gotta I add wanted to tell- yeah oh, see, What's ryan, i gotta add this is my first time ever guesting on a podcast as well so i'm excited for it uh, thank you. I mean, I got it. Well, you guys are in separate locations. You are in Colorado and Dodie or Kristen is in the Valley right now. Um, I told Luke when I, I bumped into you guys at Jax's studio city, when the second episode was airing and, uh, first off Luke, extremely much taller than I thought he would be in person. I was like, wow, you are a tall drink of water, Luke. But I said, don't give up your acreage in Colorado. He was like, of course not. Don't give up. I'm like, I'm glad you're in Colorado. Absolutely. I love it out here. Obviously, it's like where I get regrounded. As people have seen, I don't exactly fit in in this crew in the Valley, but I'm doing my best. You know, you're doing great. Kristen, how would you rate Luke's performance on his first season of a reality TV show this season? He was exactly authentically Luke. So 10 out of 10. I think that's too high. (laughs) Baby. I mean, you... I will say we started off with you even asking Jax to unblock you on social media in one of the episodes. Can you give the audience an update? Are you still blocked by Jax or are you unblocked by Jax? You know, I'll be honest. I haven't checked. I, I'm, I'm not, not something that really concerns me. Uh, he just said he sent something out on Instagram and I was like, well, I haven't seen it. Pretty sure you got me blocked. And here we are. <laughs> And Dodie, are you blocked by Jax now or not blocked by Jax? I am not blocked by Jax, but I do not follow Jax right now. Oh, oh my gosh. See, this is what I'm telling you, folks. This season of The Valley was so good. And I know we're going into the second season. um, And already so many storylines are percolating in my head just because you are kept up to date with what this cast is doing. What do you attribute? I guess, first off, were you guys surprised at the success of The Valley? And what do you attribute the success to? I am elated for sure with the success of the Valley. I, I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous with the very first teaser because it was, I think like the way Nia and Danny, what they thought the show was going to be is kind of what that first teaser was like bottle service to baby bottles, you know, dad's trying to change diapers when the girls are out of town kind of a vibe. And I was a little nervous that, if that is the route that it went and people were not authentically themselves outside of parenthood, I was a little nervous, but we got the good goods and everyone, (laughs) everyone showed up to play. But Luke, you, this is your first time experiencing this. So when Kristen talks like that, are you like, what is going on? Like, are, were you, how many of these episodes are filming? Were you just shocked because there is constant drama. I mean, we have these dinner scenes with Jesse Lally while he's telling your lady to be quiet, slamming the table. You immediately stand up at the table and you're like, let's go, Kristen. And I'm like, that's the first rule of reality shows. You can't go. You got to stay there. I mean, as a real human person, how much of a shock was the actual filming and the storylines for this show? I'll say uh, the biggest shock for me is how kind of respect doesn't exist in this world. And for me, that's a big thing that really got me fired up. I'm not a person to really pop off very often. And they, they got me worked up. Um, it's, it's interesting, you know, as far as the success goes, I, you know, I, I didn't know, I don't know what to base it on. I don't have a baseline for what, what makes a good reality TV show. All I know is I showed up and I was me and that's what I was told to do. I just kind of, I don't know. I was confused at times. Like, what is the hell is happening? (laughs) 
that's what I was like. I thought there was something, and I, you know, no offense, there was something so comedic sometimes about watching you in scenes because we as the audience have been with you guys for like decade plus and watching a newbie come into this. And that's what I also think was so amazing watching people like Jason Caperna or people like Zach. And, you know, like we have all of these other characters filming for the first time in major storylines. And that's what I also think is the magic behind it is we have people like Luke that we get to see through their eyes just the insanity of this. It doesn't matter that you guys move to the Valley. It's still the same kind of drama. And for some reason, we're really taken by that. I will say though, I apologize for saying how entertaining it is because it's really built up the back of your pain. Like all of these people's pain. Kristen, how do you deal with that over the years? Comedy is though, like comedy in general is usually based off of someone else's pain. If you're watching like scripted comedy, stand up, whatever it is. So I like that we have that comic relief at times. I think it is so detrimental, so important. Like, why do we love Vanderpump Rules, right? Because it's the drama, it's the relationships, but then you have those moments with like Tom Schwartz and it's like, ah, we needed that like relief. And I think for the Valley, like we were really fortunate and lucky to have some of that, even when it wasn't necessarily meant to be comic relief. Yeah. If that um, yeah, totally makes sense. Uh, Luke, have you seen the finale yet? I know Kristen has watched it. Have you watched it? I have not. No. <laughs> That's brilliant. That's amazing. Well, okay. let me tell you, I, I hate the spoiler alert, Luke. Uh, Brittany and Jax, uh, they separate. Uh, so I don't know if you, if I don't know if you know that already, they separate. And there is this, uh, there's a couple of scenes towards the end, Luke, where your, uh, your lady goes in with Jack to talk to Brittany. And first off, Really, I, I I was so bummed you weren't wearing the same flip flops you were wearing to go see Ariana in the uh, Scandaval episode. I thought that would have been great. Yeah. But how, how do you and by the way, I want to also point out Dodie really is a good friend because, you know, I was on your podcast a while ago when all of this was happening. And I was like, does Brittany have another house that she's like, like, and you, you were like, no, no, everything with her and Jax is fine. Everything's great. And, you know, obviously it wasn't. So I want to say that you really do go to bat and protect your friends' personal lives. Oh, but Brian, Chris, I Chris, feel like you- such a dick. Like I knew, because you aren't just like a podcaster to me. Like I consider you a friend. You're an amazing podcaster, host, like everything. But yeah, in that moment, and you asked me like, what is this other house she's shooting at? And I had, with Brittany, sort of come up with this story. (laughs) That's a lie. But this story where I was like, oh, it's like this influencer type thing. She's doing her brand deals there. I like didn't know what else to do. And I texted you right after when it all came public. And I was like, I'm really sorry I lied to you, but I had to. Well, but in my in my head, I was like, oh, I guess that makes sense. You just have an influencer house where you shoot things. Like I was like, I guess that's how houses work. Uh, Luke has now gone off screen, so I don't know if Luke got offended by the influencer to- question. <laughs> I'm joking. No, he just went to get another Miller Lite. Um, I will say though, uh, you have that scene with Brittany talking at the end, and all of these things that Brittany is having to go through that she's had to go through for all of these years. You also have such a close personal relationship with Mr. Jax Taylor from the very beginning of Vanderpump Rules. Can you take us, the audience, into what potentially somebody like Mr. Jax Taylor goes through? Because we see in these scenes, and even that scene at the very end with Brittany and Jax, where he just doesn't seem to be able to want to help himself or help this relationship. And we really see it on the Valley. Can you, I don't know if it's fair to speculate, but what do you think kind of motivates Jax in these situations? I, I motivates. I don't know. I think the biggest problem with Jax, he's always his own worst enemy. And when it comes to the separation that is, we're in the end of May now and they separated in January. I truly do not think that Jax thought Brittany was ever going to leave him. I think he thought she's going to leave the house because he wouldn't leave, get this Airbnb, take some space, think about things, come back and want to fix it without him attributing to like fixing their relationship. And I think that he's, as you can see in the finale, which we shot, you know, not too long ago, like it was a huge slap in the face. Like I, I really think he was surprised by her strength because he, I was surprised watching it by her strength. I mean, it really takes a lot. I wasn't, (laughs) I'm glad like Brittany likes to say she got her sparkle back, but 
she really is just at, she, she hit a breaking point and she said this publicly on her own podcast. So I, I always say like, I hate speaking for her, but I'll speak about what she always talks about, you know, publicly is that she just hit a breaking point and he isn't being kind and he was insulting her left and right. And who wants to live like that? Like there is yeah. no ch changing in that moment because he's yet to just say, have a moment to say, I am so sorry. I've just been such a shit husband to you. You've put up with so much. Thank you for your patience, Brittany. Thank you for sticking by me, Brittany. None of that has happened yet. Oh, and I mean, at this point, I like I do change my mind often over the last five months, or I have changed my mind often where I've said, like, I have hope. I'm not hopeless. Then I've said, never mind. I think they're done. Then I see a glimpse again. And where I'm at today is I don't, I don't think that there's going to be reconciliation with the two of them. Well, that's going to be, uh, I don't think so. Well, I, that's going to be very sad, but as a viewer, I'm going to be like, oh my God, the storylines that you'll potentially get from that. Luke, from a man's perspective, what did you see Jax go through this season from, uh, you know, kind of being a Saturdays are for the boys kind of guy. What did you see? Look, I'll admit J Jax and I are not close. We <laughs> aren't enemies at the moment. Um, however, we are not close. I'd say I talked to Brittany as much, if not more, than I talked to Jack. So I kind of had the whole both stories going on. And I know that when the separation started, you know, aside from the season being shot, when the separation started, he did, did tell me, I don't know if he was just downplaying it to me, but that it, it didn't seem like he was taking it seriously. He said, you know, we work together. We do everything together. We never get time apart, which is just nice to take a week or two. You know, she got her Airbnb. It's going to be a great little staycation for us. And I had heard different from Brittany that she was kind of at the end of a rope. And so I'm like, okay, which way is this going? Uh, last summer, I didn't hear anything from Jax personally about them having issues. Well, Luke, I mean, let me tell you, you make an appearance in the finale because Brittany explains to the other ladies that you texted Jax and said, hey, just needed to know if you needed like, you know, if you needed to talk through whatever's going on, I hear that maybe some things are going on. And then Brittany shares that she got yelled at multiple, multiple times for hours afterwards. And that was the breaking point that got Brittany to finally leave. And I just thought that's amazing. You actually reached out as a friend and that kind of exploded the whole potential of, of Brittany having the courage to finally leave. Did you know that? I didn't, I didn't know that, <laughs> but I will say there've been multiple times I've reached out to Jax to be a friend, to be a true friend. That's going to you know, not sugarcoat things, but not be a dick to them. Be like, hey, this is the way I see it. I'm seeing both sides and you can fix this. Uh, it's just going to take a little change. And uh, so let's just say I feel like I've been thrown under the bus by him uh, multiple times, like because of exactly that. And Rach te texting Brittany when I'm like, hey, I'm on your side. I can be on your side here if you let me like. Well, it's weird, though. That's why we love to watch Jack. I mean, it's weird. Jack's it's like you've made things up, though. He's also made things up in regards to like, there was one day that Luke, like I was in bed, Luke had just woken up and Brittany's blowing my phone up going, uh, what is this? What is Luke saying to Jax? Cause Jax said that Luke text him, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like half awake going, Luke, did you text Jax some like weird shit that would upset Brittany? Luke shows me his phone. Not that I need him to prove anything. You know, I'm just asking. Yeah. He's like, I haven't talked to Jack since, I don't know, like a week ago. So Jax had made up this whole lie that tried to throw Luke and I under the bus, but it was something that never even existed. So it's like, I mean, that's what, it's even like that, where you're just like, yeah. grow that, up. But that's why the Valley, I think, really works, because it really is a realistic peek behind the curtains of your actual lives. And a lot of people didn't think that this show would work. And I was, I think, one of the only people that was like, I can't wait to watch this. And it's so funny to watch people come around. I know we've talked about Brittany and Jax, but I also want to talk about you guys, because you were coming back, Christian, you've, uh, you know, you were forced to even like, you know, face like certain things that you've dealt with in the past, which I thought could be healing and cleansing in a way. Uh, but also Luke for you to, you know, stand up for your woman in certain situations, um, in season two, or even in this, you know, you have James May, you guys are obviously trying to start a family and I'm so sorry for everything that we find out in that final episode. And I know you also just lost Bowie, who I know was just a huge part of your family. 
what do you want to focus on um, in terms of your lives or potentially things that we didn't get to see this season with you guys? Luke, you want to take that first? You want me to take that first? Well, uh, Kristen, you go first. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'll say it, this comes with like hope and a bit of regret. The way we uh, talked about our sex life was maybe a little too... I, I didn't want to bring it up, but you had a massage table that you kept talking about all. <laughs> okay, well, that was really fun. I, that I don't regret at all because that was like the most the most amazing night to walk in to that kind of date night. It was like the things you see in rom-coms. Like I've never experienced someone put so much thought and love and care into something. But just our fertility journey, of course. I mean, I'm hoping for great news. But also like we're Luke and I are like a lot of fun and we like to do fun things and we like to, you know, go hiking or, I mean, we do this mostly Colorado, but it's like going, he loves going fishing. We love going to the lake. I don't like wearing shoes. We love bonfires. Like I want it to be a little more like less Jesse Michelle bougie and a little more down to earth, like to be able to do some things this coming season that are more us um, and we're getting ready to move soon. Not sure where, I mean, in the Valley, but renting a house. So we have more space so we can stay very creative. We're both entrepreneurs. Luke is the most logical dreamer I've ever met in my life. His logic rises above like my emotions. And at the same time, he's always dreaming about like next year, five years from now, 10 years from now, and I think it's just such like a fun and beautiful thing that sometimes we don't see eye to eye on because I get overwhelmed, but it's like the reality of our relationship. So I hope um, we get to explore some of that. I'm already putting a storyline together where you guys take the, the entire gang on a camping trip. Oh, I would love nothing more. Oh my God. To see Zach actually camping would just, it would make my whole year. Luke, we get them all to Colorado we, uh, and see what, what hilarity ensues. What would you think about that? Uh, my only problem with your storyline is the everybody part of it. Uh, hey. Listen, I didn't want to bring that up, but that obviously is the other thing. We only have limited time, so I do need to bring that up, and I would be remiss if I didn't, is that a part of your storyline was that uh, you know you guys didn't get invited to the Big Bear Baby Moon, which I was confused because I always thought of it. Uh, well, Listen, I'm of this, I'm going to, you don't, you guys don't have a reunion, unfortunately, because I would love a reunion, even though I understand some reasons why it wouldn't happen. But I, and I talked to Janet last week, which I don't think the audience will be able to hear, but I was saying, come on, there's a way where we can all get together and be friends and mend fences. And let me be Andy Cohen and say, Hey, is there a, is there a path forward here? There's gotta be a path forward. Can we mend this and get back to some kind of good? Look, I, my take on Janet and this is not something new or something that changed she was herself for this show and um you know she has been one to draw lines in the past and it doesn't seem it didn't surprise me at all when it came down to her uh deciding who gets to go that she cut people out it's not surprising she has put up hard lines on if Zach's coming I'm not coming at times at group parties where everyone's invited we're all going over for to Britney's for Thanksgiving well if Zach's going to be there I'm just going to stay out and so it's like, OK, make your friends pick between two people when everyone's friends. I don't know. I'm just saying that that whole side of things didn't surprise me. Did it surprise you at all, Kristen? Because you've been you have a long history with all of these people, even more way more so than Luke. Did it surprise you, actually? Because, you know, there is a world in which I could see everybody getting along in some capacity or everybody opening it up and kind of trying to see each other's differences and move forward. Um, were you surprised by this? I was surprised about the way that Janet has put Brittany in a really difficult position. That has surprised me post filming during filming. I feel like, I mean, trust me, there are times and, and Jasmine, to, uh, cause there's a scene in this episode with Jasmine saying she feels really stuck between two groups. Yes. And Jasmine as well. Right. And I think that that's kind of the shittiest move is to take your friends that are clearly saying like, I, Switzerland in a way, but it's like, I agree with this part of what you did, but, and I don't agree with this, but I do agree with this person and not agree with that. That's just being an adult. Like it's okay to have your own feelings. It's okay to also have boundaries, but to pretend like you're to take a little quote from Zach, like the queen of fucking England, 
and just like the hierarchy of it all, like the matriarchy of it all and being like, this is how everything's going to go down. I'm glad she had her little summer of fun, but this will not continue moving forward. But I mean, can't we, I mean, I'm imagining another imagination, Luke. I know this is probably tiring for you, but like we get this first episode where we all come together and say, hey, you know, I mean, I, I feel like there's a lot of power with you guys coming together with these two sides. And can you understand at all since she was eight to nine months pregnant that she was very stressed out, that she was, I mean, listen, it came off as comedy, even though she took it very real of Zach trolling in the Instagram story of putting his location as Big Bear. I think the audience kind of laughed, but you were trying to understand from her perspective do you understand that at all of like, okay, she was actually worried about her pregnancy at that time? Do you understand that? I can sympathize and understand not wanting to be stressed during her pregnancy. Of course. Like I'm not evil, but I feel that she took advantage of so many situations and was like, the baby, the baby. She was like lighting the match, setting the can of gas right next to it and then going, but the baby just say you don't like these people. Just say you don't want to be around them. Stop putting it on your pregnancy for every single thing. And if that were the case, then maybe you shouldn't have filmed a season of reality television. It's going to change this year. That's just how I feel. I personally don't like the idea of not including people. I know what that feels like. I feel like, for example, you know, when we start filming season two and some, you know, Brittany's having a get together or Jax's or whoever or we are, let's say, I'm very fine with just going all are welcome. You make that yeah. choice. And if you come just respect it, let's say it's our home, like you respect our home and you respect the two of us. But I feel like icing people out, especially because let's be real, it is a television show. It's so far less interesting. And I truly don't like that being that person that says like, Almost like you're not good enough to be around us. Yeah. But no, prove I me, prove me yeah. wrong and and show up and be an adult. Yeah, I think that's where we could go. And I'm really excited about the prospects of some sort of healing so we can actually kind of move forward. But were you surprised in a positive note, and this is for Kristen, but also for Luke, that you got so much love from the viewers and the fans this season, Kristen, of like, you know, because you've been sometimes where you know the other side of that, where people were like, I want to see Dodie more. I, man, this is great to have her back on television. Did that surprise you? And Luke, you weren't around for the Vanderpump rules of it all, but were you kind of happy to see how much positivity was going Kristen's way? I was absolutely happy to see it. I mean, ultimately, I, I, let's just say, yes, I'm happy that it went the way it did. I didn't know which way it was going to be taken. Like I said, first time, I didn't have good expectations or any realistic uh, idea of the way it was going to go. Um, as far as everybody coming back together, I think it's some apologies owed to Kristen uh, for it to happen. I think there's not going to go so far as to say groveling, but there is some serious apologies that need to happen for her and I both, because as you see, I'm very protective of Kristen and I'm not going to roll over. There's some very nasty things said by certain individuals and, and Janet. Yeah. That's, that's Thank just God. not going to go away unless they really put in the effort to mend things. And I would, I is will it, say, I, I look forward to having a conversation with Jesse when we start season two, because he and I did have a small text exchange uh, a few weeks ago. And I, cause I just acknowledge it's, it's not even apologies that I personally want. I want like acknowledgement of behavior and. Well, you did become a scapegoat in that whole relationship in certain ways. Um, mm -hmm. You know, just looking back and I will say on a positive note, you see Jesse and Michelle Lally. Now they are separated. You see that final scene and they both look like they're thriving. I mean, Jesse Lally was on Watch What Happens Live. He was like doing cartwheels or something. I was like, I, I've not seen this side of Jesse on season one of the show. But it's interesting because you were that scapegoat that they said, Doty, Doty, Doty. And I got even a little confused of like, wait, Janet, Doty, piecing this together. What was that text exchange with Jesse like? Was it positive? It was positive. Yeah. It was just me acknowledging um, the vulnerability that I saw a couple of episodes ago when he truly apologized to Danny for acting like a fool, wrestling to the ground, being like, oh, you're so sensitive. But then when he really just took accountability, tears in his eyes, really feeling his emotions and not putting a guard up as like the quote unquote douchebag that we've called him that he's called himself, right? 
<laughs> so I just said I really appreciated seeing that on the episode and you know that was just really kind and he apologized to me for any and everything he had said and done to me over the season. So I, I would we're, we're not on like best yeah. season by any means but I think that we can I think without all of the drama that is um, that was between he and Michelle and all of the hurt that they were experiencing and anger, now that that seems to have like kind of subdued and like chilled out a bit, I think there's a world where Jesse and I can have an adult conversation, and I would I would like that. Not that I'm going to necessarily consider him like one of my good friends. Yeah, but it'd be really nice to not have the the disdain. You have a place to build from. And Luke, you were about to add something to that. Yeah, I think, you know, Jesse and I have been uh, cordial in times crossing paths at Jax's Bar in different places. <laughs> finally, finally, we do have to talk about Michelle Lally because this is another relationship. And in the final episode, you admit through Luke that you kind of made a fumble here and you didn't say she had a boyfriend for a year. She said, you said she had a boyfriend a year ago and Luke kind of brings that up to you and you make a very strong clarification. That's a big clarification to make. And you said, Hey, sorry, but it is wild because we kind of went away from any of that information at all. So I think the audience was still so curious of what the hell was that about? Was that when she went and got her other apartment before she moved back in with Jesse? Because there's so much confusion with that. And also you guys are in a real tenuous position with your relationship. Can you explain a little bit about that and your previous relationship of how you know Michelle and where we can possibly go to mend these fences? Yeah, so I, I will say the whole thing, there were so, it was so convoluted and so messy as far as like the director person was not it, the director person was just a director person that had nothing to do with the sexy pics, the whatever, whatever. Yeah. The sexy pics. I don't know anything about that whole Jack's situation. Then there was also this supposed celebrity that also had nothing to do with me. What I was talking about is just someone completely separate. And so I, I just feel like it was Jack's just, pulling things out of his ass and blaming it on whoever, or maybe Jax knows knew or knows something that I don't know. I know it. I mean, I ja know. Ja Jax was Jaxing. Jax was Jaxing, but Jax always blames it on you. And I was saying, screw the girls. Jax talked so much smack about you this season. Does that ever hurt you as a person of like, you've known this person for so long. He says you guys have a brother sister relationship, but he like knocks you down every chant. Like, Oh, I know how Dodie is. I know this. Does it ever hurt you watching that back? Sorry to get back to Michelle, but I just thought of that right now. No, yeah, it does be, it hurts in the way because when he says like we're like brother and sister and then everyone's like, oh, we'll remember what happened in season two, whatever. We're both from Michigan. I'm very close with his sister and his brother-in-law. I do feel like a sense of family with his family. It's just that it's hard for me to take Jack seriously when he's spewing these lies and this dumb venom. But now cutting to like now today, and especially the way he's with Brittany and the way he's throwing me under the bus, but he's still like texting me being like, you know, I need advice from you. And like, I thought you were my friend. Well, it's like, then stop treating me like shit. Cause now like mom is done. Like I can't yeah. continue to support you if you're going to continue to treat me the way that you are, because I am fine with Brittany is my best friend. Brittany is my number one. Cruz is my number one. But if I can do anything to support Brittany by keeping Jax calm, by when he's, you know, losing his shit and being the crazy Jax that we know. And if I can talk him off that ledge of spewing hate and venom, you know, whether it's out loud or in a text message to other people, it, I feel like at times he will listen to me. That's so great. That's why I choose to take on that role at times. That's but great. I feel over the last, what Luke, maybe last like three weeks, a month or so, I'm just spent. I'm like, you know what? You don't, you don't get to have me in your corner anymore. We need you guys to be well rested for season two. So you can't be spent. We got to get your energies both up. Um, uh, but, but back to the, uh, we, I, I literally have to go here in a sec, but Michelle Lally, is there a place to mend? Because it seems like you guys were going off and then she throws out this talking head two weeks ago saying that you potentially did some stuff on Luke that is, I, which by the way, I don't know if you watched that episode, Luke. I mean, did that drive you out of your mind? And was that almost like a getting back at you for saying what you said in the hallway? 
He didn't you know, watch it, but I sent. Sorry, Luke. I, he did. I'll say he did not watch it, but I sent you that clip. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did see the clip, and to me, I read that as her doing anything she can possibly do to deflect and not own her own actions. And it's maybe all I have to say about it. Um, you know, don't necessarily. Uh, not necessarily. I don't believe that that is the case. I think that is her still being angry. Yet, it's clear to everybody she was over this relationship seemingly at the beginning of the season. Like she we was see done, that right? the audience sees it immediately. Like I've never seen somebody so disinterested, but also what was fascinating was that she felt like she needed to stay because of things he was saying. So it was really, even if, you know, whatever your relationship with her uh, now, it really is fascinating to watch her journey. Yeah. I, and I don't know where, if there is a future for Michelle and I, I really don't. I know that I've been very cool. Anytime I've seen her, I've been, very, you know, she comes to Jackson's bar with Brittany or somewhere else. I try to say hello. I try to be cordial. She does not reciprocate the same sort of even politeness to me. Um, as far as a friendship at this point, I'm really disappointed in the way she handled herself all summer. And I'm really disappointed in the comment that she made about, you know, me not procreating or like I shouldn't have a baby was just kind of like, huh, that's really interesting. And I know she's since apologized publicly, I guess. I have not spoken to her. I have It hasn't been acknowledged to me. So that's something I hope to look forward to. I would appreciate it because it's a pretty fucking bold statement. Because you me. guys were good friends before we cameras were. went up. You guys, we uh, so that would be something that I would hope you, you guys can find some, you know, because you both are going through things in your lives and it would be nice if you can get on some kind of equal footing or ground that you can actually listen to each other and potentially empathize with each other. Um, yeah, okay. I'm so sorry. we, got I feel, I feel honestly like at time. Yes. Okay. So here were my faults. I definitely misused my words that changed an entire meaning. Very well aware, not proud. Luke explained it to me perfectly. I need to slow down yeah. my mouth, let my brain take a beat before I just start reacting that way. But Michelle, I did protect her. It felt at this point, it feels like a moot point because they have broken up, divorced. They both seem very happy. So that's so great. But like, don't start making up rumors about me or trying to throw me under the bus to save yourself. Luke, I want to point out, killed it in that scene where he talks to you. And that's like where I was like, wow, he speaks Kristen. Like you were able to like sit like, and I will say to your credit, I was like, wow, you are really like, it wasn't over. I didn't think over forceful, but you were like, listen, this is, and I thought it was such an interesting, like where a lot of relationships have those conversations where you weren't steamrolling over each other. And Luke, I thought you held your ground and said, this is what I see. This is how we actually should be about things. This is the pattern I'm seeing with you. And I thought that was a really great scene just showing how you guys work as a couple. So hats off to, to Luke for that. Um, okay, so then finally, uh, the Valley, it's the hot new thing. I think this is gonna explode even more in season two. Would you think, uh, because Vanderpump is so tied in with this, Sheena and Lala, that's obviously it. Would you like to see them on more because they had guest appearances here and there? Do you think the Valley needs it at this point? Not at all. I think Tom Schwartz would be a fun, like, jumper in her. Like, Tom Schwartz is good vibes, good friends with everyone. I think it would be fun if, you know, Tom came around. But, um, I mean, let's be clear. Like, Alex Baskin, the creator of our show, the creator of Vanderpump Rules, he did an interview with Hollywood reporter and said, our cast is bursting at the seams. Yeah. It's not happening right now. And I really like that. And it's like, it's no offense to Sheena and Lala, but we did hold this all on our own. Like we did this did? All ourselves. And I worry, especially watching the last season of Vanderpump rules. I don't want anyone coming in trying to play puppeteer. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I, yeah, and Luke, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. you're catching up to all of this. Do you agree though? Or would you like, Hey, the more the merrier. No, you know, I, I I'm going to tag onto what Kristen said, Tom Schwartz. I probably had more intimate or close conversations with him than anybody Vanderpump or uh Valley. I, I guess that not including Zach and Danny, but uh, in Kristen, obviously, but uh, you know, Tom Schwartz, I'd love to have around. He's just a fun guy. Uh, yeah. As far as the girls go, you know, 
I don't know. I don't think we need more people being nasty to Kristen is kind of how I feel. <laughs> You're so protective. <laughs> You're so, man, you guys have set it up for season two so well. I I have to go because I just had limited time with you guys. So thank you so much for being here. I also want to point out to the audience because I was in Amsterdam and I went to the Vincent van Gogh Museum and I started posting Vincent van Gogh paintings and I had never got that many damn DMs in my life of that's Luke, that's Luke. And I was like, what? And uh, Luke, I DM with Luke here and there and I'm not good at checking my DMs. But I was like, do you realize how many people think that you look like Vincent Van Gogh, the painter, the iconic painter? He cut his ear off, but still an attractive man. Have you heard this before? I, I have heard it and I see the resemblance. Maybe I need to dive deeper into my family tree and see if I'm a descendant. You know, <laughs> and he has he cut his ear off. I stabbed myself in the leg. We got some things in common, I guess. <laughs> it, uh... Um. Well, thank you guys for your service. I hope you're I hope you're still all all systems go, Luke, on season two, because I worry about you, but you killed it this season. I can't wait to see where next season goes. Thank you for making the time for me and the show and our audience. I truly Maybe appreciate that. that. You guys, Balancing Act is a fantastic podcast. In fact, their Tom Schwartz interview was top notch. I wish I could do another half hour just on Joe Wenberg with you guys, oh but this God. is about this is about the Valley. So uh, is there anything else we can support you guys on this off season? James May, I know just had a fantastic partnership with another brand, but how do we support you guys? Yeah, James May, we, we are um, really doing this women supporting women, small businesses right now. So we have Stassi's little sister is actually one of our partners. She has these amazing handmade smoke rings. We're doing these little like cross bags with Hannah Wingate who is a small business owner out of St. Louis, Missouri, and then the altar. And it's like all of our good juju spray, which you see on the goat, as well as um, when I gave Ariana, like at, when I was on Banner yeah. season. So those are all, all women, small owned businesses. We love and appreciate all the support. And yeah, please listen to Balancing Act. Uh, yeah, yeah but- fantastic pod. Yeah. What, Luke? Listen. Listen to the balancing act. Follow me on Instagram so I can get, you know, maybe get a brand deal one day and (laughs) just keep following. There's, there's an announcement coming out this summer for something I'm putting on in Colorado next year. So just like keep watching. Oh, I got to leave it at that. Okay. Uh, Okay. I'm already thinking what that possibly could be. So thank you guys for making this time for me today, but really one of my favorite seasons of a reality television show in a long time. And I know that's off of your personal pain, but thank you for your service. And you guys, we will talk to you and talk to you guys hopefully again someday in the future. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks, Ryan. Ryan.